thought it was just a fever dream from my childhood. But no, it took a little bit of digging around the internet, but I found it. Pikachu's Winter Vacation is two little like 10, 12-ish minute shorts for the Christmas uh, time. It adapts kind of, well, it creates two Christmas stories for Pikachu and his Pokemon friends. The first episode opens on a snowy village and a narrator saying, "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the town, cheer and goodwill did truly abound." Until he completely pulls the rug out under his own narration, he's like, "'Something's about to go wrong. Something always does. I know this is the case. Humbug. Phooey. Hogwash." He starts literally begging for something to go wrong as Pikachu and his friends are doing snow bowling, like the cute little buddies that they are. He's all like, I bet that ball's gonna hit Bulbasaur. Ha <laughs> ha I just know it. And then it's all like, look at that Cyndaquil. I know he's up to no good. As if Cyndaquil isn't the cutest little guy ever. Holy crap, the high-pitched little voice that comes out of that thing is so adorable! Things do hit the fan though when Totodile accidentally shoots the ball up into the air and knocks this deli bird out of the sky. Its presents get scattered throughout the town and the Pokemon have to work together to find all the presents before deli bird's delivery at midnight or else Christmas will be ruined for all six people that, you know, are getting presents from this bag. Not the highest of stakes, but you know, high enough for this cute little special. So it's a fun setup that leads to some cute antics, and I gotta say, Totodile puts in the work to make up for his mistake. When they spot a gift on top of a boat, my guy dives off a bridge into the river and power swims upstream to catch this boat. After some more searching and antics, including Psyduck joining a parade of wild gloom for some reason, they all get the gifts back just in time for Delibird to make his delivery. And he delivers to the big man himself, Santa Claus, whose sleigh is pulled by one single Stantler. I guess he only needs the one in this world? Or more likely they didn't want to animate 12 reindeer Stantler. Santa flies off, and in perhaps the wildest twist of all, it turns out that Santa was the pessimistic, drama-seeking narrator at the beginning. I guess he only works the one day a year, so he just likes to stir up trouble wherever he can, because he's got nothing else better to do. The second special starts with our good boys building several snowmen, then all working together to build one giant snowman, Snorlax. A narrator, who's not Cranky Santa this time, says that just like Santa, magic too can be real if you just believe- hold on a second. Look how cute they all are sleeping in their matching blankies by the night's fire. Oh my god. Pikachu and co wake up to see that Frosty the Snorlax is at their window, and they all excitedly get up and run after him. He leads them through some dark and creepy woods to a not at all ominous cliff in the dead of night as they cheerily follow behind. The next couple seconds of animation are truly wild. It turns out Frosty the Snorlax brought them here for this one apple on the tree. Is this Adam and Eve? Is Frosty the Snorlax the Satan snake? Chikorita uses their vines to try and grab the apple from a safe distance, but it slips and starts to fall. All the Pokemon then dive after it, straight towards the end of the cliff, with no regard at all for their safety. Frosty the Snorlax also dive after it and eats it? Don't ask me how, he's made of snow, eats it in mid-air, and his weight crashing down on the cliff has the whole thing break, and all the Pokemon start riding Frosty's belly down the side of a mountain at alarming speed. They end up going off a rock ramp into the air again, landing on an iceberg, and after the sheer mass of this Snorlax Frosty causes the section that they're on to break off, they start drifting out to sea. We then cut to see them out at sea angry at Frosty the Snorlax, as if following him at all was any sort of good idea. Frosty the Snorlax frankly couldn't give a shit and falls asleep. Bulbasaur's expression sums up how I would feel as well. The Pokemon are then awed by the Aurora Borealis. Oh wow, isn't it so beautiful? And now they're suddenly being sucked into a whirlpool. Where did that come from? Don't ask me, but they're being sucked into it and the situation is dire. Frosty wakes up from them screaming for their lives and freezes the whirlpool solid with a breath attack. This lets all of them have a neat little experience like an aquarium with all of the water Pokemon of the ocean, including a funny quill puff-up competition between Quillfish and Cyndaquil. God, Cyndaquil's the cutest. The Pokemon use Snorlax's ice breath to make a big boat and start sailing home. You would think, oh wow, 
know, what a cute little special, and, you know, you call it there. You'd be wrong. The ice boat breaks apart, and the Pokémon might all drown to death in the ocean, but then some nice Lapras come and save them. Cool, cool. And then they're led to the home of a bunch of other Frosty the Snorlaxes. Like, so many. All of them happily exclaiming, Lax, 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 Lax as they see the Pokemon approach. My new theory is that all of this was an elaborate plan from the original Frosty the Snorlax to get his village some dinner. Frosty decides to not eat the Pokemon and goes to join his family. Everyone waves cheerfully goodbye, except the Lapras, who are rightfully suspicious about this whole ordeal. The tuckered out Pokemon fall asleep. They are still very cute. They all wake back up in front of the fireplace, and at first I'm thinking, maybe this is all just a wild dream that Pikachu had? Because it seems like, oh, you know, he's waking up from a dream. But then everybody, all the Pokémon are talking, you know, in Pokémon, so I can't understand them, but it seems like they're all recounting last night's events, and they all run out to go check on their giant Snorlax Snowman. It's still there, or it came back? I'm not really sure. They're all very happy to see it, which is great, but leaves me with a lot of questions about what really happened, and how they all share a memory, and I guess I shouldn't think too much more about it. It's a Pokémon holiday special in a short animated series aimed at, like, the younger side of the kids' demographic of the Pokémon anime series. So yeah, that's Pikachu's winter vacation. Uh, two wild events. He meets Cranky Santa Claus, and he brings Frosty the Snorlax Snowman to life. Uh, it goes on a wild adventure at sea. Things that I guess are canon in the Pokémon world. I was happy to go and revisit this episode. I would recommend you check it out, but it's hard to find online, and even harder to find in whatever language you happen to be looking for it in. So, uh, good luck, but if you want to see it, it's a fun time. It's cute. I'm glad that I watched it. Speaking of being glad that people watch things, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, I've been doing a bunch of holiday specials, including some other animated ones. You can see one of them right here, or something else uh, that might pique your fancy right here. Subscribe if you want to see some more holiday stuff. Uh, Hanukkah is starting soon, so I have stuff coming out for that. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and have a good week.